the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome, my dear friends, to this Eucharistic celebration. We have come together as a family. Let us call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord for pardon and forgiveness. From today we begin what is known as a Christian Unity Octave Week. And we pray that there be unity among Christians. As we have one shepherd, there should be one flock. We pray for one flock. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, have a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. 
and he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, but because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. But behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for he will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to the psalm, I have found my servant David. Please repeat. I have found my servant David. Then you spoke in a vision. To your faithful ones you said, I have set the crown on a warrior. I have exalted one chosen from the people. Our response, I have found my servant David. I have found my servant David and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. Our response, I have found my servant David. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I, for my part, will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Our response, I have found my servant David. Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck ears of corn. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath. And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him, and he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even 
of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We see in today's Gospel, Jesus and his disciples were going through the cornfields. The disciples do something what is unexpected. They pluck some ears of corn and nibble at the grain. Were they hungry? Was it out of natural curiosity? Or was it gluttony? Maybe it may be a spontaneous reaction. The ears of corn may be within arm's reach. And so they stretched out their hand and they plucked ears of corn and began to nibble it. They were being watched. The spoiled sports were there. The joy killers were present. They are the Pharisees. And they were scandalized by the spontaneous gesture of the disciples. And they asked Jesus, Look what they are doing. They are not supposed to do it on the Sabbath day. For the Pharisees, everything is foreseen. For the Pharisees, everything is regulated. They have taken upon themselves the role of watching for any deviations. What is allowed? What is forbidden? And from this Gospel passage, we need to examine our lives. Yes, and we have to reflect and ask ourselves, Am I a Pharisee? Am I a Pharisee in my own personal life? Or am I a Pharisee when I am judging others? I may not have stolen from anyone, but have I deprived someone of what is due? Or again, I have not killed, nor hurt or wounded anyone, but have I hurted them by my words? We know how words are. Once spoken, just cannot take it back. And it hits you here. Not only the other person, but also we ourselves are hurt. Our entire day goes bad. Have I hurted someone by my silence? It was time for me to speak. Have I kept silent instead of speaking? Have I hurted someone by my criticism? Have I hurted someone by being indifferent in my behavior. Our Lord reminds us today that beyond the allowed and the forbidden, there is one thing to be desired, and that is love. When it comes to love, St. Paul, when he's writing his first letter to the Corinthian, tells us, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous nor boastful. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rather what is right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. We may have faith, we may have hope, we may have charity, but the greatest among this is love. And for this, we pray at this Eucharist that we may love God and we may love one another. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For to your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worldly in these mysteries. For, whatever, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death and resurrection, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, will Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, 
since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses, and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. You have been